clustering. In a nutshell, this is about birds of a feather flocking together. Our example algorithm that we will look at is k-means, and we've already seen this idea earlier in the course. Here are some photographs, and then we said put like things with like, and our clustering algorithm made two clusters based on cat1 and cat2, or maybe based on is the tongue sticking out, uh, or is the tongue not sticking out, sitting standing, cat selfie, not cat selfie, or what have you. That's clustering algorithms. So, for our example, do you see any clusters here? I see some clusters by eye, sure, something like that, yeah? Okay. Could we have done this without having labels? That is a trick question to see if you are paying attention. There are no labels here. So, of course, this is unsupervised learning. All we have, all we know about is the ingredients and we are finding those clusters ourselves. Could we have done this without using our eyes? Sure, otherwise what are we doing in this section? So welcome to k-means. The k in k-means stands for the number of clusters that you are requesting. So this is up to you when you are using the algorithm, you are ordering as if from a menu, I would like three clusters please, or I would like two clusters please. That's the K, what about means? The means are something like centers of mass or gravity. So don't worry about what the math is behind centroids, just think of that kind of as a, as a center of gravity. And your intuition for it will be pretty good actually. I'll be computing them for you, but I'll be having you guess first where it's going to be and you'll notice that you'll get the hang very quickly of what this object means. So the technique begins by sprinkling some labels throughout our data entirely at random. Boom. We have a blue cluster and a red cluster. What do you think of the clustering? Looks good? Nice clusters? Yeah, I don't like them either. Let's compute the centroids, shall we? First, do you think that they will be close together or far apart? The blue centroid and the, and the red centroid. Close together? Sure, because there's quite a lot of points and they were assigned at random. There's no particular reason why all the reds have to be in one place with a very different center of gravity from all the blue ones. Fine. Okay, do you think it's gonna be slap bang in the middle here or somewhere else? Maybe pulled a little bit towards where there's more points. So a little bit down and left, yeah? There? Something like that? You'll get closer, don't worry, as you see more of this. Okay, what's next? We will forget the old cluster IDs, boom, forgotten. And then we are gonna do something of such astounding brilliance you will never see it coming. We're simply gonna give each point the color of the centroid closest to it. So, red or blue for this one? Red, red or blue for this one? Blue, how about this one? That is why we let the machine do it. <laughs> it is better at this than you are. Turns out that's red. How do you feel about the clustering now? We're getting somewhere? Yeah, looking, looking better. Let's keep going. Let's recompute the centroids and take a moment to guess where they're going to be. They're gonna be far apart or close together? Far apart, and how are you doing? Yeah, okay, you kind of get what these things are now. And again, we forget the labels. And again, we do the same thing. ID of the nearest centroid, and then we go round and round doing the same thing until the clusters stop changing. Spoiler alert, there will be no further changes. This is the last solution. So round and round, nothing changes. These are our clusters. Job done. So that is k-means. Now, standard burning questions from the audience. I wanna see if I can anticipate them. Two questions that are burning. How do you pick K? That's not on my next slide, so I'll address that right off the bat. Depends if we're doing analytics or if we're doing machine learning. So again, you can use the same algorithm for different applications. If you're doing analytics, you don't know what you're hunting for, you're just trying to get inspired. So what might you do? In a loop, K equals two, anything interesting yet? No, how about K equals three? Anything interesting, how about K equals four? And you look at the results every time and you see if anything feels compelling to you. It's a, it's a pretty nice approach to data mining. If this is a machine learning application, you know exactly why you are trying to do this. Maybe you have some kind of um, 
nice app where the users put pictures of themselves and their friends. And then based on the photographs for everyone's amusement, in some way it splits that into two groups, puts party hats of different colors on the two groups and says these are your sports teams for beer pong or something. Then you know what the purpose of that app is and you've just said it's two teams that you're trying to make, so then fit for purpose two will be the split. It depends what you're using it for. Other questions? Some typical ones I tend to have yelled at me. Google engineers are like, will it stop? Tell me, will it stop? Will it just keep going round and round? Because you know what? If I get a point that's equidistant between these two clusters, it could just like bounce back and forth between the two because the coin keeps flipping. Oh, take a deep breath. <laughs> yes, it converges because the actual implementation is a little smarter than this and involves, of course, a loss function. And the loss function has to do with the distance of the points to the nearest centroid. And so even if the point is equidistant, well, the distance computed is still the same, so the scoring for the loss function is still the same. So even if the point flip-flops from blue to red, it still considers itself to be finished and will stop and give you the answer. How about same result every time? What do you think? Yeah. So. Oh, fight. <laughs> fight. The answer is no. The way that you do the random sprinkling of the labels does matter. Imagine if you have 50 data points and you ask for 49 clusters. Try that out. You will notice that you don't get the same result for which one has two points in it every time. So I have a try it first slide for all our methods. And here you will try it first if you have no labels. This tends to be the first unsupervised learning thing you go for if you have no particular reason to suspect you, have, you should be using a different one. And this is where you want to split your instances into groups. Another kind of unsupervised learning approach is one where you are looking for anomalies, what is unusual. And that's a different thing, we won't talk about it here. Uh, this one is where you're going for separating things into groups. <laughs> 